Let me ask you this. What if someone's watching this and, and it's family? Mm -hmm. They have someone in their office that's, uh, uh, f you know, they've brought a family member into the office place. You know, when you hire a family, it gets a little crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. They bring them in, and it's just a, it's a caustic. Mm -hmm. Do you, does this apply for family, too? Oh, oh, 100%. Really? So you would actually tell family, hey, we're kind of done talking here. You would do that? I, I would tell that to my wife. Really? Oh, yeah. I would say, honey, I'd be glad to finish this conversation if it stays respectful. Really? Because, because right now, it's not. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm communicating to her that I am committed to high levels of respect in our communication. I'm, I'm, my goal with you is connection. Okay. And disrespect undermines connection. Okay. So I'm going to have a conversation with you as long as it stays respectful. Now let's talk about this communication action item. Mm -hmm. if, you're watch, if someone's watching this right now, a Thriver's watching this, what are some action items they can do right now to really dial in their communication? Is it just making sure it's respectful? or? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how I feel, okay. and I'm going to learn about what it is that I need. And okay. now sometimes you might have to get online and pop up a feeling chart, you know, because you, do, you go, I'm mad. I'm okay. I find, well, I was okay until you made me mad. You know, so I got two feelings. It's like, no, no, it's not really, it doesn't work that way. It, <laughs> it's much more complex, and it's much more effective to have words attached to your feelings instead okay. of behaviors. Because typically, we behave our feelings if we don't have words for them. So this is what children do. Children throw themselves on the floor, roll around, kick things, throw things, slam doors, run out of the room, whine. When adults are doing that, this is not good. Okay. So I have to be able to assign words. You know, I feel rejected, I feel hurt, I feel lonely, I feel disconnected, I feel uh, disrespected, invalidated. There's all kinds of feeling words that I have to learn in order to be able to communicate to you, here's what's going on inside of me. I now, want you to see me. Now, the final one is you know, the boundaries. So as far as action items, should, should thrivers kind of assess and go ahead and take a deep dive if they've never done this and define their boundaries of what they want their schedule to look like and what they want their relationships to be like? Or what's the, where do you start? It's kind of a developmental process. You know, I have to learn that I'm powerful. Okay. I have to learn that I'm responsible for those decisions that I'm making. I have to choose my goals. I have to be responsible with those goals. I am going to uh, learn to communicate in such a way that I'm able to chase fear away and invite the I care about you message to, to, to create a, a connection with you. And then I have to learn how to prioritize what is it that I'm going to protect about my life? Yeah. What are the essentials in my life that if those go away, this goes away? Mm. What, what are those essentials? You know, a strong marriage, strong family, you know, healthy finances, healthy body, you know, healthy spirit. I mean, I, I got some things to take care of before I can get to all y'all. You know? and, if, and if I don't, then I'm sacrificing the goose to spend the egg. I love that you're saying that because it's so, it is so empowering, the idea that you do have the power to take control of your life as mm -hmm. opposed to being powerless. And I love that because I've talked to so many thrivers personally who've told me that they feel selfish when they're setting those boundaries. And mm. I think you've really cleared that up. So mm. uh, final question I have for you is for anybody who's watching this all over the planet mm -hmm. and they say, I, will, I like that. I want to learn some more about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe, can you recommend your, your, your book or tell them where they can find you online so they can learn more or if they want to have you come speak to their organization where they can do that? Yeah, Loving on Purpose is uh, my organization, so lovingonpurpose.com. Um, I've written several books. Uh, uh, Keep Your Love On is the most recent one, and that's one we've been talking yeah. about. Culture of Honor is another one, and that, and that has a lot of uh, paradigm, really, around what, what does it look like for powerful people to work together and protect that relationship while we're both happening. Because classically, people take turns being, being uh, s submitted. We call it submitted, but it's really uh, powerless. Like, you get to be powerful, I'm going to be powerless, and I'm going to hate it, and then I'm going to try to get it back. And this, <laughs> this dynamic environment tears things apart because I, you know, I don't really understand the idea of honor. Um, loving your kids on purpose is really the culture of honor in your family. Okay. You know, and how do you empower your children? So I would recommend those three books and look, check out the uh, lovingonpurpose.com site. You've blown my mind. I'm going to have to like duct tape it back together and try to put the brain matter back in later. So yeah. I, I appreciate you though putting up with me and thank you for awesome. being here. Great to meet you, Clay. Thanks.